back on the road, I'm heading into Cork City. Here, old stereotypes of Ireland's conservative outlook are once again becoming outdated. A growing drag community has emerged in Cork. They've been through a difficult Covid period and tonight will be the first public performance for some drag artists here since the pandemic began. There's so many different genres of drag in Cork. I mean, you have everything from your club kid to your more burlesque to your more classic drag. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the likes of me, say, a, a girl doing drag. And um, that would still be quite relatively unusual, you know, in, in Ireland anyway. Change has come here only relatively recently, however. The legendary female impersonator, Danny LaRue, came from Cork and went on to become one of the 1960s highest paid entertainers. But that success and acceptance was found mostly in Britain after moving there as a child. Ireland back then was such a different place, entirely different, uh, different attitudes and uh, different outlook. Uh, it was only in, I believe, 93 that uh, homosexuality was actually decriminalised. So I, lots of people that I know from that time um, up sticks and moved. They might have gone to the UK or wherever they went, went to a country that was more uh, liberal with its attitudes or where the community was larger so you could feel that security. And uh, but then, of course, Ireland has progressed so much. Ireland was the first country to legalise gay marriage in 2015 through a referendum. Covid aside, Cork has vibrant pride celebrations. And now Danny LaRue's grandnephew has established a leading collective of drag performers, the House of Mocky R. We're Ireland's first drag house and we're, we're now the biggest house, other ones are springing up and now there's this incredible scene where like, you see all these different styles of drag and performers which we didn't have before. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that we now have social media and things like RuPaul's Drag Race which bring drag into, the, into your home. So it's like, you know, before I found out about drag through, you know, through family, but now you literally go on Instagram and there's like styles of drag everywhere. So it's e more easy to be inspired, which is great. And tell me about how the pandemic affected you and the whole scene here. Specifically with queer people in the LGBT plus community, again, it's, our spaces have been taken away. And for the likes of myself and the other queens, our work was taken away. Yeah, it's taught us a lot. And what I've loved personally seeing is how resourceful queer people are. I haven't seen some of my friends in 18 months all in the same room. I haven't seen a, a proper audience in so long, but I'm ready to not do drag in my bedroom anymore. <laughs> I'm very excited to come back on stage. Again after the first no. time. What? No. Well, the first time I was in drag, I fell on the parade day, <laughs> broke my heels, my wig came off, and I still kept going. Persistence and determination. Brilliant fun. Flamboyant, yes, but also wickedly satirical in places. But what I ultimately saw was a bunch of really good friends, brilliant entertainers, but loving performing live together in front of an audience who loved it as much as they did. Thank you.